Today we continue a four-week journey to the manger, guided by Luke's story of Christmas and accompanied by those traditional Advent themes of hope and peace and joy and love. Last week we stocked up on hope through the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, an elderly couple who wanted something they couldn't get. What they wanted was a baby, but Elizabeth was barren and both of them were getting on in years. They had almost given up hope until that day when Zechariah was serving in the temple and an angel of the Lord appeared to him, telling him that his prayer had been heard, that his wife Elizabeth would conceive and bear a son and he would name him John. It was news too good to be true, but because Zechariah couldn't believe it, he was struck dumb, unable to speak until that promise was fulfilled. At the end of last week's sermon, however, there was Elizabeth sitting in front of her bedroom mirror, five months pregnant, all her hopes fulfilled, combing out her long gray hair and saying, this is what the Lord has done for me when he showed favor upon me to take away my disgrace which I have endured among my people. There was hope in that story. And it gave us hope for our own journey. If this could happen for Zechariah and Elizabeth, then it could happen for any of us. There is nothing that will be impossible for God. This week we come back to the Gospel of Luke looking for a little bit of peace. And we look for it in the story of Gabriel and Mary. Luke says it was in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy that God sent Gabriel to a town in Galilee called Nazareth and to a virgin whose name was Mary. She was engaged to a man named Joseph who was a descendant of David and that's about all we know about her. We don't know where she was or what she was doing when Gabriel came, probably just going about her regular, everyday chores, drawing water from the well, grinding meal behind the house. Maybe she was asleep in bed when he came to her. But when he came to her, everything changed. Greetings, favored one, he said. The Lord is with you. We're talking about peace today, but this sudden appearance of an angel and his startling words were most unsettling for Mary. She was perplexed, Luke says, and pondered what this greeting might be. The calm, flat sea of her thoughts was stirred up into anxious waves by his words. She wondered, what was he talking about? And he said, don't be afraid, Mary. The Lord has shown favor to you. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. It all sounds like good news, doesn't it? You're going to have a baby boy named Jesus. He'll be called the Son of the Most High. He will sit on the throne of his ancestor David. He shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Mary only has one little question. How can this be since I am a virgin? We don't know how old Mary was. We assume she was quite young, but it appears she was at least old enough to know how things work. You had to have a husband to have a baby. That's how it was in those days. How can this be? She asked. And Gabriel answered, oh, this is going to be a very special kind of birth. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Spirit of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And it must have been that look of absolute disbelief on Mary's face that made him say, your cousin Elizabeth, do you remember her? The one everybody said was barren, the one they said would never have a baby? Well, she's six months pregnant. 
if you hadn't heard. And this is just to show that with God, nothing will be impossible. Yes, this is a miracle, but it's not a big miracle for the one who called the universe into existence. God himself will cause that tiny egg inside you to become fertile, cause that single cell to divide and multiply until it becomes a baby in your womb and then bring forth that baby into the world and heaven and earth will sing. It's a little miracle, the size of a pinpoint. But never doubt that God can do it. Well, we all know what Mary said next. She said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. But today I want us to stop and consider what Mary had to stop and consider before she said it. Although she was not yet married, she was betrothed. And as Alan Culpepper says in his commentary on this passage, the marriage would have been arranged by her father. She would live at home for a full year after her betrothal, and then the groom would come to her take her to his home, and the wedding festivities would last for a full week. Legally, the marriage was sealed after the engagement. Thus, if Joseph had died before the wedding, Mary would have been considered a widow. Here was Mary, hearing all this from the angel and wondering what it would mean to say yes to him. She lived in a small town, and as you know, in a small town, any news becomes big news. If Mary turned up pregnant before her wedding, tongues would be wagging all over town. Everybody would be talking, and certainly she must have thought about that before she said yes. I've told some of you the story of my own wedding, how I got a phone call from my mother on the morning of December 24th, 1982, Christmas Eve. She said, Jim, I've been thinking about your wedding. Yes. Well, you've got it planned for sometime in May of this next year, right? Yes, I said, May 13th. She said, well, I've been thinking, if you have your wedding on May the 13th, three of your brothers will be out of the country or otherwise unable to come. Really? Yes. Well, I hadn't thought about that. Well, I had, she said. <laughs> and I've been thinking, if you got married, say, next week, <laughs> all of us could come. We would just load up the station wagon and we would drive from West Virginia to Kentucky. We could all be there. What do you think? Well, I didn't know what to say. I, I was supposed to pick Christy up that morning and take her to work, and we stopped along the way at McDonald's where she ordered a cheeseburger and sat down and took one bite, and then I said, what would you think about getting married next week? 